Hello and welcome to this quick demonstration showing the power of Cisco Defense Orchestrator in a multi-cloud environment. My name is Scott Bauer and I'm part of Cisco's Security Business Unit with over 15 years of experience in cybersecurity. Today I'll be covering a topic that is of major concern for many of our customers. How can we improve our security posture through policies and procedures even as we integrate or migrate our workloads to the cloud? Specifically, how can Cisco Defense Orchestrator empower our customers to maintain their security posture as they move workloads to AWS? We are at a very challenging crossroads in the industry. Many of our customers have had to accelerate their adoption of cloud as more and more of their businesses and workloads are in transition. They are dealing with a plethora of devices, accessing their data and applications in an expanding environment. As these security controls evolve to meet this new world, many customers are required to learn different interfaces from different vendors. And with these new interfaces, they are required to deal with the complexity of change management when changes are done in different platforms, interfaces, and locations. And with these new interfaces, they are required to deal with the complexity of change management when changes are done in different platforms, interfaces and locations. This is a recipe of breaches, policy violations, and potential stability issues that can impact their business. Without long-standing expertise and experience in cloud-based management, Cisco has been tackling these types of challenges for over a decade. Consolidating where we can, utilizing standard architectures when they are available, and now requiring open APIs in Cisco products. Cisco is a leader in cloud-based consolidated management. Cisco Defense Orchestrator, a part of the Cisco SecureX family, is Cisco's platform for policy, visibility and eventing, and an integral part of our incident response architecture. Deployed today, customers utilize CDO to manage ASAs, Firepower Threat Defense, Meraki, and other third-party applications such as Amazon AWS. It is the foundation that other technologies will also utilize. For example, Umbrella, SD-WAN, and SASE to name just a few. Today's demo will be covering the integration of AWS security policies into CDO. So as CDO is part of SecureX, we can take advantage of a single sign-on architecture. Here we go in, basic user ID and password, and you can log into all of the Cisco security products that you're licensed for. From there, we can actually click into either SecureX, we have our AMP, Umbrella, CDO, and Southwatch Cloud. All of these leverage Duo as our dual-factor authentication. We can go back later on and actually get the logs of who logged in where and what applications are they using. So as we dive into CDO, we get our base login screen and in here we can have actually the ASAs, our FTD boxes, etc. Now we're looking at Firepower Threat Defense here and on the right hand side we have our policy configuration. Now the reason why I show this is later on we're going to come back and do the AWS policy configuration and it's going to be very, very similar to what we see here, leveraging the experience and the education for our, our uh, engineers. So we're going to go ahead and add in our AWS. As part of AWS, we're adding in our virtual private cloud. And as part of that, we are actually doing a progr programmatic access to it. So we need our access key and a secret access key. Now this is just the standard way that AWS allows access into their environment. So we're going to give it a name and then we go down beneath that and actually select the programmatic access. Very straightforward. After that we set our permissions and other things we want to do with that and then at the end of here we're going to go ahead and export the configuration or the two different keys themselves. So we create the user and then we can go in here and download that CSV and enter the information into CDO. Within CDO, now that we have access to it, we're going to select our VPCs that we want, our region, 
as well as which VPC within that region. All right. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and give it a name, as well as any labels that we want to actually use to actually get more information or allow more information around this VPC. We're all done with that. We're going to click Continue and add in this VPC into my dashboard for CDO. Here we have our FTD, Acme for Corporate Firewall at the top. We can see it's synced and online. And then the VPC we just added is synced and online as well. So it's going to read in all the information that we had for that security group into the policy table. So now I go into my policy table, and this is the same look and feel as we had before with Firepower Threat Defense. Again, leveraging the experience and the education for the administrators. As we scroll down through here, we can see all of the different security group and definitions that we automatically pulled in using that programmatic access. I can go in here and edit it. I can give it a remark. I can add ports to it. I can basically make the same changes I could within AWS, uh, the console for AWS, and now I can do that from CDO. So now I don't have to have two different locations and two different methods to actually create the policies or edit the policies that I have in place for this combined environment. So when I go back in here again, I go to the top, I can see that I have uh, changes that are pending. I can click on my VPC and deploy now. Those configuration changes you see at the bottom start to sync to this VPC. And at the very end of there, I'm going to be able to go in and look at the change log and see what changes have been deployed, what was successful, who did it, when they did it, etc. I don't have to have two different locations as I would have had if I had two different interfaces for, for change uh, management. So my change log here, I've gone in and modified that one policy, basically with just a comment, but that could have been any policy configuration, and I could see it very quickly and easily what was going on. Now, if I flip back over to AWS and look at the VPCs as well as the security groups that are being used, I can go to the one that I just edited, and you can see very quickly at the bottom here, those are the changes that we actually put into play. So what we actually did is we created the policy changes within CDO and pushed or synced those changes back out to AWS using the open API infrastructure that they had. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the power of CDO and its ability to look at objects and policies to see if we have any issues. Now you see at the top of the screen here, we have a number five, which is basically telling me that there are five errors or inconsistencies in my objects themselves. Those objects could be network objects, security zones, cloud security groups. There's your, there's your AWS security group. And if I expand out from the filter, I can go in and turn on or turn off the different types of errors. Now, in this case, it's five unused. So in the process of onboarding my AWS, I exposed the fact that I had several objects within the AWS that were configured that I've never used. Now, this could be a error, this could be uh, on purpose, but without this level of visibility, I wouldn't know that these, these objects were not being used as easily as I can within CDO. So I can go in there and actually remove those two. Again, doing the policy configuration changes offline within CDO, and then pushing that change into AWS itself. So at the very end of this, right, folks, we've gone in and we made the changes, but because Duo and the multi-factor authentication is, is the, the access layer into my environment, I have all the details that Scott Bauer logged in. He logged in using Firefox. He logged in from Mooresville, North Carolina, in the United States. So again, because of Duo tying it together, we have that full closure or full loop on how things would change, etc. So as we can see, very quickly, CDO has given us this access into AWS's VPC environment and are able to define or uh, edit the security groups. 
If you'd like more information about CDO, you can go to www.cisco.com go CDO.